Okay, in our next installment, here's what we're going to do. We're going to solve this equation for k the first time. So one of the things this illustrates is situations where we have to get rid of, so to speak, or we have to deal with a fraction. So we want to make that, remember, the, the key is we want to make that 1 in this case. Because when we multiply by 1 or divide by 1, we just get what we started with. So what's going to turn a half into a 1? Well, if I multiply it by 2, I'm just illustrating this point, um, that if you take 2, which is 2 over 1, times a half, you get 2 over 2, which is just 1. So the way to get rid of a fraction, so to speak, is to multiply it by its reciprocal. So we're going to have u sub s equals, uh, let's see, we'll do 2 times a half. So actually we need to multiply it by the 2 on both sides. All right, so I'm multiplying by this 2 on both sides. Okay, x squared. That's going to get rid of the half, and I'm going to have 2u sub s equals kx squared. Now, I've got to get k by itself, so x squared has to go. The fact that the x is squared doesn't make any difference in this case, because it is being multiplied times k. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide both sides by x squared. And then, I should have my answer. 2u sub s over x squared equals k. So in the next problem, we're going to look at how to, the very, it's going to be basically the exact same way, except we get one last step to get rid of the squared. So in this problem, we'll start it off the same way. We're going to multiply both sides by 2. So that will leave us with 2u sub s equals kx squared. But in this case, remember, we are looking to get the x squared by itself. So we have to divide both sides by this k. And so I have 2 u sub s over k equals x squared. Oftentimes, I don't know why, I kind of like the thing I'm solving for to be on the left. So if sometimes I'll have this, and then the very next line, I'll just rewrite it. x squared equals 2 u sub s. It's the same thing, right? All right. Now, to get rid of a squared, to get rid of this guy right here, we are going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of this and the square root of that entire side. What that will do is reduce the x squared into just an x. So anytime you have anything squared, you have the letter m squared, and you take the square root, those two will cancel and you'll just have the n. Any other. And that will equal, now, the square root on the other side just states square root of 2 u sub s over k. Now, this is where math people and practical, intelligent, clear thinkers, not uptight people like math people are, this is where we differ. In math, they will tell you that you need to rationalize the denominator. That this, By the way, this square root extends over the entire thing. So like you could look at it as the square root of 2 u sub s over the square root of k. And math people freak out when, they, when you write this. And I do not know why. I have yet to find a math person anywhere on this planet who can explain to me why this is so horrible. They'll make you get rid of it. It's a whole process. you got to multiply top and bottom by the square root of k. Blah, 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 blah. If you've ever had to do it, you have probably thought to yourself, why do I need to do this? You don't. And in my class, physics, you don't. Just leave it like this. It's fine. I will not get upset about a square root in the denominator, I promise. You might sense that this bothers me. I spent too much, waste too much of my life doing it. All right, here endeth the video. Okay, so we're going to go after the um, t in this equation. But we're going to have a situation here, so we're going after the t. So it's squared, so the last step we're going to do is going to be like the end of the previous video, where we had to take the square root. Um, in this case, 
this happens a lot in physics. Sometimes quantities are zero. So for example, um, this quantity here and omega sub zero are both zero in this case. Now, what I do when that's the case is I have a bit of notation that I use. I draw a line, an arrow through it like that, and I write a zero up there. So that entire term, the theta sub zero, is going to be zero. What about this term? Well, the whole thing is going to be zero because I don't care what t is. If I multiply t by zero, I'm going to get zero. So I will, in this case, for that whole term, I'll do the same thing. Draw a line through it. That really leaves me with theta equals one-half a t squared. And we've seen a problem like this. In fact, it looks exactly like the end of the last video. So maybe you should pause the video and try this one on your own at this point and see if you get the right answer. Welcome back. So now we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 theta equals a t squared. I'm after t, so I'm going to divide both sides by a, which is going to leave me with 2 theta over a equals t squared. And the last step when you have a squared is to take the square root of both sides, and that means that t is going to be equal to the square root 2 theta over a. Remember, what we did that last step was take the square root of both sides. And I decided to write the t first. So that would be your right answer. All right, now we're going to solve equation 47 for g. Is that correct? Let's see. Let me make sure. Okay, so, well, there's the equation. I found it. Lost it, and now I found it. There we go. So here's our equation, and in this case we're going after g. What this is here to illustrate or help us with is to how do we handle square roots, because we know that if we have something squared, like in the previous problem, where t was squared, to get rid of the squared, we take the square root. Well, the opposite is true as well. If something is having the square root taken, eventually we're going to square both sides of this. But first, let's do this. A little note about square roots. It is perfectly legal and fine to take that square root that we see over the L and the G and to break it up as the square root of L over the square root of G. That's fine. I would like to point out that the following is not okay. In some situation, if you had the square root of A plus B, you cannot split the square root up over addition or subtraction. You can over multiplication and division, but you cannot do it across addition or subtraction. So pay careful attention to that. But in this case, we're good. We can split it up. So I can write at that is t sub p equals 2 pi square root of l. Really, I can do this over square root of g. Now, I want g. No? Yes, I want g. Ooh, okay. So do you remember from an earlier video what I said you could do with this guy and this guy? It's perfectly legal to switch their places. That means I can write square root of g equals... So we can switch these two. That means I can have... 2 pi square root of L over T sub P. Now, we want to get rid of the square root that sits on the G. So we have to square both sides. So we're going to take this, and we're going to square, and that will get rid of the square root, and we will be left with just G. But what the heck happens on the other side? Because on the other side, we're going to have to square that entire side. Well, that means everything gets multiplied by itself. So the 2 gets multiplied by itself. That becomes a 4. The pi gets multiplied by itself. That becomes pi squared. The square root of L gets multiplied by itself and just becomes L. Square root cancels. Same thing we saw over here. And 
that t sub p gets squared, so it's just t sub p squared. Everything over there gets multiplied by itself. And that's all there is to it. So we have two parts here. We switch these and then squaring both sides to get rid of the square root on g. All right, we'll pick this one up in the next video.